So we're going to look at the importance of choosing the right grade of engine oil for your car. Most of your engine wear occurs when the engine first starts up and it's in that warm up cycle and choosing the wrong grade of oil can be really detrimental to the lifespan of your engine. So we're going to look at oil. We're going to look at the numbers on oil. This isn't going to be a super technical in-depth guide to oil that goes into all the scientific definitions. It's a street guide to oils so that you can make the right decision as to which oil you should buy and put in your car. Is oil just oil? Let's have a look at some of the important things that oil actually contains. How has oil actually evolved and changed over the years? We're also going to be looking at performance cars. So you've got a car, you've added parts to it. Should you change the grade of oil that you use? Stay tuned to find out more in this video. So before we look at which oil to use in a performance car, it'd be helpful just to get a basic understanding of engine oil, the components that make it up, and how to determine how suitable a particular oil is for your car and your application. So what does oil actually do within the engine? Well, it coats all of the metal surfaces inside the engine. So as they rub against each other, it doesn't create lots of heat from the friction. The oil reduces that friction. So the oil needs to circulate the metals in the engine. It needs to coat everything nicely and it needs to coat with quite an extreme range of temperatures. When you talk about oils, you talk about viscosity. Now, if engine oil is viscous, it doesn't flow very well. As it flows better and better, the viscosity decreases. So you're looking for an engine oil that flows well inside your hot engine. But here's the problem. If the oil gets too hot and too thin, it stops forming a protective coating. It starts to shear away from the metal surface. So you end up with metal on metal contact and that's really not a good thing. So how do you tell what an oil is? On the bottle of oil that you get are two numbers. Now, looking at those two numbers, it tells you a lot about the operating range of that oil. So with engine oil, those numbers are important. The higher the number, the more viscous the oil or the more sticky. So if the numbers were really high, it would be like honey. If the numbers are really low, it'd be like water. You want an engine that flows, but you don't want it to flow too well because it will be flowing into bits of the engine that you don't otherwise want it to. So manufacturers think long and hard about specifying different grades of oil. And the choice of grade actually varies a little bit to an extent as to where you live and how cold your car is when you first start it in those winter months. So for those countries where you would have really, really low temperatures in winter, you may want to choose a thinner oil or a certainly an oil with a much lower initial number. That first number with the W would indicate the winter or the cold weather characteristics. So we'll take this example of a 15W50 oil. So 15W is the viscosity when that engine oil is cold and not flowing very well. And 50 is what it does when it is warm, when it's at your operating temperatures within your engine. So 50 is quite a nicely flowing oil and it's the sort of thing you would typically want to use in a performance engine. So with a multi-grade oil, you're not limited to a very specific viscosity at specific temperature. It's a fairly flexible oil. And when they've got synthetic oils, they're able to manufacture oils to very, very precise and exacting standards. There's a big difference between engine oils, so it's certainly important to make the right decisions for your car. So you'll notice some manufacturers specify a 0W30 or a 5W30. So if they've specified that, that's really what you should be going out to buy. So if you experience really cold winters where you are, or you've got a particularly high performance car that needs a little bit of extra care and protection, it might be worth going for the 0W30. But even within the grades, that's not the end of the story. There's lots more complexities into the blends and the formulas that they use to make up these oils. And certainly a lot of cheap oils perform very, very badly in a car and they degrade very, very quickly. And some of the more expensive premium oils can run for 24,000 miles, so the manufacturers would have us believe, without degrading and still being able to provide the lubrication that they had at the beginning. Small favor to ask, could you just drop us a like? It really helps us to get out there and let us know in the comments what car you've got, what mods you've done to it, because that'll help me get a feel for future video content. And also YouTube's algorithm loves that sort of thing. They love to see interaction 
interaction on the videos. So it won't just be for my benefit, you'll be helping the overall channel and sharing the information that we're providing. And hopefully if we get a little bit more traffic, more visitors, we'll have more budget to play with and we can actually start to do some projects and taking cars apart. So a lot of people just leave it up to their local mechanic or the local garage to decide what oil to use. Now they're trying to make a profit and they're going to get away with using the cheapest oil they can find in the most part. There are good garages out there that actually pay a little more attention to detail. But in the main, I've not been very impressed with the choices that garages have made. And besides, if they cause engine problems, they're creating more work for themselves. Perhaps that's a little bit of a cynic view but there you go so there's a few generalizations that we hear a lot and that's that a high performance car needs a very fine grade of oil and the older cars need a thicker oil because they tend to burn oil so their myths there's a little bit of sense in what people say but actually as a rule of thumb it's really not something you should go by every engine is different and has very different needs if you've got an older engine that's starting to burn oil you may reduce the amount of oil seeping by the pistons if you have a thicker grade of oil but you've really damaged the lubrication so that engine is just going to go on wearing more and more quickly so it'd be far better just to get those rings sorted and get the engine back to its former state where it wasn't burning oil rather than just keep putting thicker and thicker sludgy oil in that's just asking for trouble manufacturers are very careful at specifying specific grades of oil for your car so i would strongly recommend that you stick with whatever is in the handbook unless you've done multitude car we'll come to that in a little moment so is oil just oil well no let's have a look at some of the important things that oil actually contains so oil isn't just oil oil contains a whole shed load of additives so it needs to resist burning if the engine oil got too hot and suddenly ignited in the engine you've got a problem plus there's an obvious safety issue of having hot oil that's ready to ignite just pouring out of a car after an accident so within the oil there is something there to prevent it from combusting at high temperatures there's also whole manners of other additives that go into the engine. Some of them bond-ish to the metal surfaces to further reduce the friction. Some of them stop the oil from degrading and breaking down. And within oil, you've got a whole series of different layers from the rather coarse base layers of oil to very fine layers of oil. And the molecules in the oil are generally different sizes. If it's a synthetic grade of oil, things are much more uniform and much more heavily regulated. And in fact, a lot of synthetic oils last for substantially longer than mineral oils just because they are so consistently made. A mineral oil will typically break down over time. The larger particles inside the oil will actually break down as the engine starts circulating the oil. So over time, it will become thinner and thinner and less effective at lubricating your engine. I've heard of some people changing grades of oil depending on the winter and summer. Now, for most people, that's irrelevant. But if you live in a climate that has extremes of temperatures, it probably makes a bit of sense to just make sure you've got a decent grade in there for winter so you've got the maximum protection when the engine is most in need of it at those cold temperatures when the oil is not very viscous and then in the summer they switch to a lighter grade of oil that allows the engine to to perform better don't buy the cheapest oil you you can it's a false economy the oil really does prolong the life of the car and changing the oil at the specified schedules is really one of those essentials. I've seen 250,000 mile engines look almost like new inside because the owner has fastidiously changed the oil every 5,000 or every 9,000 miles. And I've seen other engines that have only done 20 or 30,000 miles with extreme wear in them just because the owner has neglected the oil servicing and has chosen a very cheap grade of oil that broke down very quickly. So if you top your engine oil up, you're not actually really replacing the oil. You're not changing the oil. You're just literally topping off what was lost. And what was lost is typically the finer elements of the oil, the bits that really nicely lubricate the engine and get into all the little nooks and crannies. So the oil is becoming more and more sludgy. And as you top it up, you're getting less and less of those fine oil particles. So if you were reasoning that in the last year you've put four litres of oil in and your car takes four litres of oil, you haven't changed the oil. You've got four litres of fairly sludgy oil that you've just kept topping up. If you've ever wondered what happens if you put too much oil in your car, 
we've got a video on that. So search our channel for too much engine oil and there's an in-depth video looking at the damage that happens when you overfill your oil. We're talking about excessively overfilling your oil, not just a little bit. But keep an eye on the dipstick, make sure the car has always got an appropriate level of oil in it. So the oil actually helps cool the engine. It's reducing friction within the engine. And lower friction means lower temperatures. So it allows you to get a little bit more performance out of your engine and keeps the engine within its operating temperatures. So it doesn't have to throttle back the power or the fuel that it's using in order to keep itself cool. So how has oil actually evolved and changed over the years? So we're gonna talk about a substance that they've used in engine oil, ZDDP. It's called zinc dithiophosphate. So ZDDP is an additive that forms a sacrificial layer within the components on the engine. So instead of metal on metal rubbing, the ZDDP is the surface that's it's worn away. The trouble with ZDDP is it damages your catalyst. So whereas that was once upon a time a highly recommended additive to have in the oil, it's now something people shy away from because it damages catalyst. Obviously, if you've got a motorsport car that doesn't have a catalyst, it's still something that we should think about. But it just highlights really how things evolve in the world of tuning cars. And we've really got to keep our knowledge moving forward because those things we used to do and used to think have to change to cope with the new technology technologies that are always coming out and developing on cars. So should you choose a different grade of oil after you've tuned your car? Well, a lot really depends on how much you've tuned your car and how you've changed its operating. So if your engine is now running hotter and the parts are moving faster and creating a lot more friction, there's certainly a strong argument for changing the grade of oil that you're using. Just keeping within the same grade of oil, there's a big difference between the high performance oils that are offered by specialist manufacturers and the off the shelf mass produced lower quality oils that you would get in your typical car parts store. So even without changing grade of oil, there's a big difference in what's available to you. So make sure you've done your research. We've got an oil forum on our site where you can discuss engine oils in more detail and uh, the guys on there would be happy to share their knowledge and help you to choose an appropriate grade for your project. So I would certainly think about changing to a less viscous oil if I've tuned my car and I've added a lot of performance parts. So going up a grade or two makes a lot of sense. Um, but as I've just said, look at the quality of the oil that you're buying and always choose a good quality fully synthetic oil. The mineral oils, I don't personally feel are very well suited to high performance engines. Most manufacturers specify a synthetic grade of oil and cars with turbos are particularly sensitive to the oils that they use. The oil goes through the turbo to help lubricate it. So it's dealing with very high operating temperatures and those high operating temperatures can cause a lot of problems if the oil doesn't have the correct additives and it's starting to burn off and it's starting to degrade. And most turbo cars that have the wrong oil will eventually suffer from some kind of sludge buildup which really restricts the flow of oil within the engine and the most important thing really is just to get the oil changed regularly and frequently and keep on top of the schedule so thanks for watching if you haven't subscribed please do so throw us up a like because that really helps us to get out there and don't forget stay tuned So we're going to talk about a substance that they've used in engine oil, ZDDP, zinc dialkylisophosphate, zinc dialkylisophosphate, phosphate, zinc dialkylisophosphate, zinc dialkylisophosphate. It's a big word. I'm never going to get through that. I'll just put it up on the screen. It's called zinc dithiophosphate.